so, so mischievous. So mischievous. Well, what's happening, honey badgers? Hello, honey badgers. This is the Honey Badger Wildlife News Report. That's right. There's a lot happening. And so I don't need to tell you this, but I think I do, perhaps. Um, subscribe. Please subscribe. Check out these links in the video's description and see how you can help. Honey Badger don't care. Honey Badger don't give a shit zoo. Um, so yeah, just please. Uh, you can... You can completely support us by subscribing. Up and running. That's exactly right. You know, there are so many internet crazies happening. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, at Randall's Animals, you can also find a way, um, use Tipperbot, and you can uh, support and donate to what we're doing here uh, via, or via, via cryptocurrency. Um, and speaking of cryptocurrency, this week we'll be attending the cryptocurrency, the Crypto Invest Summit here in beautiful downtown Los Angeles. And it's going to be quite extraordinary. We're expecting a lot of folks um, to be participating and speaking on blockchain technology. And listen, folks, the collapse of the United States economy is coming, so you really owe it to yourselves to get into cryptocurrency. That's the truth. Um, you already subbed. Thank you so much, Lil Payne. Hello, Wendy. Thank you for watching. Hello, Ruth. What's up, everybody? Yeah, so as I was saying, uh, you can support us um, with crypto and all this sort of stuff. And you can simply follow us, uh, follow me rather, on Twitter at Randall's Animals. And thank you again, Little Payne, for uh, subscribing. And I hope everyone subscribes and checks out the links that you see in this video's description. Because uh, we really are the only one bringing you wildlife, environmental, animal uh, news updates. There's a lot happening. Uh, let's see. They're saying, what is this? Videos, what are you talking about? What is this? They're telling me all this busyness about the video being, how it's encoded. With some video codec. So annoying. Has that ever happened to you folks? Where they just start telling you all this stuff about, uh, about your stream? Is this a dream? Can it be real? Is this a dream? Can this be real? Dropping bombs with this real. All the wildlife being affected. You gotta look. Economy is dissected. Each and every way, get the microphone and everybody has to say. <laughs> but enough about that freestyle stuff. I just want to make sure y'all can see me. Apparently there's something crazy happening with this codec. Codec. Um, all I really care about is as long as y'all can see me. Y'all can see me. So, the internet is cray. Hello there, my love, Robbie. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Honey Badger Wildlife News Report. Um, so, let's just get right down to it. Um, a newly discovered beetle species was found in Malaysia, and they named it after Leonardo DiCaprio for his effortless work in trying to help the environment. Now, this tiny black beetle has a retractable head and protruding big eyes. Uh, the DiCaprio beetle, uh, is... Uh, really fabulous. It's a small beetle, and that's what they say. They say that it's really something. Now, wait a second. Let me switch over to this. This is offline. What is this? How is this 
piss offline now. Oh, good gravy. Ah, uh, I tell you. Now it's gonna come back on. Watch. See? Stream resumed. Stream resumed. The stream is continuing. Thank you. Thanks for that. Jeez, Louise. You know, technology is so funny. It's like I might as well use an AOL CD. <laughs> this is really crazy. Oops. Okay, so I'm back. I'm back. Oopsie doopsie. Um, as I was saying, please subscribe. Please check out all the links in this video's description. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. No, I'm back. I'm back. Okay, so let's start over, okay, shall we? There's a newly discovered beetle species that was found in Malaysia. And it was named after Leonardo DiCaprio for his effortless work in helping to save and better the environment. Now, this DiCaprio beetle is a tiny black beetle with a retractable head and protruding eyes. So basically, it looks like Don Knotts. Now, the DiCaprio beetle is amazing. And uh, just FYI, this is really cray cray. But when they determine a new species of beetle, they have to dissect the male genitalia. Yeah, it's true. They slice the, that beetle's penis just, <laughs> just to see what's going on. So, Romeo and Juliet was my, fa my favorite too, Wendy. I, oh, I mean, DiCaprio is just such a fine actor. And you should know that DiCaprio, in 1998, launched his environmental foundation. And he's really been doing a ton of good things. Seriously. He's one of these celebrities or uh, folks that's in, in entertainment who gives back, who really does his best to give back. And uh, you would think that others like Soros, who Jeff Bezos, I mean, Jeff Bezos, this, uh, you know, Amazon has so much money. I think he's worth like, like billions of dollars, right? And it's just amazing to me that Jeff Bezos doesn't give back, doesn't really help. It's true, look it up. This guy doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know how to donate. Imagine if we had to do that for ducks. Oh, goodness. I would not want them to dissect a duck penis. Anyway, so yeah, when they determine a new species of beetle, they dissect the male genitalia. Uh, DiCaprio, 1998, his foundation. Now, earlier this year, there was this big beefy fly that they found in the uh, Brazilian Amazon, and it was named after Arnold Schwarzenegger. And also, they found a moth in the same region with a yellowish-white scale on its head, and it was named after Donald Trump. <laughs> I'm not making this up. There are new species of insects that are being found, and they're usually named after folks. Uh, for instance, they have a Kate Winslet beetle. They have, if you can believe this, they have an Arnold, Sch um, I mean, a uh, Adolf Hitler beetle. Really crazy. Uh, so yeah, they just named this DiCaprio beetle, little tiny black beetle from Malaysia. And earlier this year, the Brazilian Amazon beef big fly, named after Arnold Schwarzenegger, and the moth with yellowish white named after Donald Trump. In other news, the world's oldest known spider has died at the age of 43. It was a female trapdoor spider and it hailed from Australia. Otherwise known in the labs as number 16, they kept a good eye on this uh, trapdoor spider. She was really something. Vivacious, um, everyone knew her, and everyone just loved this uh, trapdoor spider uh, named number 16. And she died recently when she was stung, she received a fatal stung, uh, sting from a wasp. And, um, geez, Louise, this old spider who lived to be 43 really, really enjoyed burrowing, really kept to herself. She was a very friendly um, spider. Yes, vivacious. Just such such a, a life, such a, the life of a trapdoor spider. All eight legs straight up. 
And uh, all those years, only known as number 16. Agreed. So that's why today I'd like to say that um, let's give her a name. Let's give her a name so she's known as more than number 16. <laughs> Wasps. Wasps are indeed pretty nasty. They don't care. This wasp went over to this uh, old spider lady and was just like, screw you. Um, maybe we should name her Burroughs. Anyways, that's quite sad news. But 43 is a, a long life uh, for a trapdoor spider. Is it the same kind of wasp that legs the eggs in... Oh, goodness. Uh, you know, I don't think so. But you know what I just got privy to is the, um, the spider worm, which is really gross. Spider worms do that. They go inside of spiders, and they just burst out of them. They're parasites. Vivian, yes! Yes, Michael! So, I'm sad to say that Vivian, the trapdoor spider, who lived a good life, kept to herself, loved to burrow, has passed away at the tender age of 43 when stung by a really nasty-ass wasp. In other news... Sadly, hedgehog sightings have fallen for the third consecutive year. Um, in the BBC Gardner's uh, World Magazine, BBC Gardner's World Magazine, they keep track of this sort of thing. And they've conducted this survey for a few years now. And just recently, they've said that six in ten people surveyed have not seen a hedgehog this year. Which is really um, quite interesting because they used to be seen a lot, especially around the countryside. And the countryside in particular is the one that is noticing the absence. Uh, hello from Garden City, Kansas! And rest in peace. Yes, rest in peace to Vivian, the trapdoor spider. God bless her. She just, you know, she, she was just doing her own thing. Um... Hello, 43 Aquaman. Hedgehogs are beautiful. That's right. They are beautiful little creatures. Oh, like me. Like you. I love you. Stop it, 43 Aquaman. But yes, uh, hedgehogs are really quite amazing and loving. And more than just um, for video games. I mean, obviously, you know, I think so much of society, when they think of hedgehog, they think of Sonic. Right? In tails. But that's good. Listen, whatever brings attention to a species or an animal, I am definitely I definitely support. Um so yes, the uh the numbers are sadly dropping for hedgehogs just for the sightings. For the third year in a row, the numbers are going down. But um hopefully they can uh find out what's going on. If you ask me, perhaps it has something to do with um, the taking away of habitats. You know, whenever they start doing things like cutting down trees and digging up all the uh, precious earth for their parking lots and things like this, we just take away, that's just how we take away uh, our species habitats. Um, honey badger is the best, absolutely. Do they don't know why? Uh, so, so far, no, they, uh, 43 Alchemy, they don't know why um, the sightings are going down. Good question. Um, but one can only assume it is because of the, the absence of habitat. Um, you know, so many companies dig, dig up dirt, dig up the homes. I mean, I even see it near where I live in, um, in the park over here. They've been digging up a lot of dirt and stuff, and so... They just, um, I've seen a lot of groundhogs and gophers recently being like, screw this, I'm out of here. Because they just start thinking, over in Griffith Park, this is, by the way, in Los Angeles. Over in Griffith Park, I used to see a lot of groundhogs. But now when I see them, it's because they're fleeing for their lives. I just, I see, you know, you see wherever you go. You see a lot of bulldozers and forklifts and stuff like this. But I just want you folks to know that this is encouraging news that they found in Malaysia, the DiCaprio beetle, because 
while we're having to get used to uh, the decline in species and um, see a lot of species um, on the brink of you know, extinction over the next 20 years, it's always wonderful when they find a new species, be it an insect, be it um, a reptile, bird. Um, so this is encouraging news. And um, it is, yes, construction, basically. Uh, hi. And, oh, Lurk, I don't want to throw you off your agenda, but I have an interesting fact. Many, I'd like to share if possible. Yes, Andy, please share. Please share. This is, you know, while we do this, uh, while I do my uh, Honey Badger Wildlife news reports, this is what the top chat is all about. Just go into the chat. You can super chat. Let's talk. This is all about, this is a time for conversation as well. I mean, I'm just trying to find a way that we can focus some resources on helping the poor, helping children, and protecting wildlife. We have to protect children, and we have to protect wildlife. And as far as I'm concerned, the more money that's spent on militaries, and I mean, you see this, you know, the, the head of the EPA just really, really is a piece of work. Um, it's kind of a long chat. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it, Andy, please. Please. I mean, it's it's worth bringing up. This is the time and place to, to do bring up. And thank you so much for your support and for watching the videos. Again, folks, if you're watching this, just subscribe. It's so easy. So easy. Um, listen, are there cards here? Here, there are some new videos you folks can watch. I've recently read... Um, some tweets you folks can watch that sort of thing let's see it's, it's, um, you know really what I'm trying to do here folks is just try to raise an awareness um, they can't protect themselves it's true see children and I just gotta say children and wildlife as you know they don't have the voices and they have rights so someone has to stick up for them uh, 43 Aquaman. Randall, do you know that Z Frank is back with the new animal video? Frogs, I think. Oh, really? No, I did not know this. I will have to look. I mean, any of these videos, anything... I mean, I, I just don't know what to say. You know, a lot of uh, the stuff that takes place in the media and on the news, it's just not about children or the innocents as I like to call them, the wildlife. I'm an environmental scientist whose focus is uh, pre-treatment in wastewater. Uh, to make a long story short, estrogen and pharmaceuticals are currently turning male fish into girl fish. Jeez Louise. Okay. I'm with you. I'm with you so far. And thank you so much for doing what you do. Thank you so much, DJ Kitz. Um, gosh, that's stunning. I've noticed that, um, Ashley. I'm, I'm blanking on the type of fish, fish it is. But I, there is an aquarium, um, that I go attend near San Pedro, or in San Pedro, where they have species that are, um, have both genders. Okay, so this happens when hormone medicines are ingested. Once the body utilizes all of the estrogen from the pills that it needs, the waste estrogen product is ex excreted via poop. Andy, is that why they say not to throw out your old drugs away in the garbage? Estrogen is dangerous stuff, really. Oh, goodness. This is really stunning. I mean, I gotta say, you know, there are new species that are being born from chemicals. I mean, there are species out there that are just adjusting themselves to the chemicals that, that we manage to place and spread around environments. So, you know, you used to see stuff on The Simpsons where you have a fish with like three eyes. And it's, it's not funny anymore. Like, that's crazy. My cat has both genders. Wow, interesting. Good grief. That is so fascinating. Um, a hermaphrodite. 
Uh, too many children on the planet. Resources are finite. Climate change is real. Habitat overshoot is the real thing. Support Planned Parenthood. I couldn't agree with you more, James. Um, I mean, you can see it. You can see... Look, the systems of government that we have all around the world... Um, I'm, I, you know, to make a long story short, not that they are like, yay, but when there are natural disasters and mass mortality events like a shooting or a mudslide and folks are taken out in great numbers, they're, you know, they'll tell you that that's a good thing. They'll tell you that's a good thing because that's just survival of the fittest and um, there are too many inhabitants on the planet anyway. Hey, Viper God! What's happening, sweets? He is. It's very rare. Oh, it is rare. Hermaphrodites. But, you know, I, I feel like a lot more species are becoming hermaphrodites as Andy is uh, um, explaining right now. Uh, happening also because of their environments and the chemicals. Um, and, and now, and now, um, estrogen and testosterone and these sorts of things, you know, it's, they drink water, like animals and species drink water and are in the water. So, I mean, when, when you have an earthquake in Japan that, enables toxic waste to flow into the Pacific, or you have oil tankards that just happen to, whoopsie, spread oil into the ocean, this is, this is what happens, in addition to things like estrogen going into the water system. Oh, sweetie. He's very shy. I like the music. Everything's perfect right now. Thank you, DJ. The poop then travels through your local wa wastewater system. I mean, it's amazing. This is amazing, Andy. I'm doing well, sweetie. Thank you. How are you, Vipers? I just want to send love to anyone out there who's watching and everyone and anyone. Um, this is serious stuff. I mean, this is why I'm happy to do the wildlife news report because it's all about our environments. It all has to do with our environments and species. The pharmaceuticals are not treated out of the wastewater because there are no current regulations that require the removal. Do you know, perchance, Andy, if there are regulations that require the removal of oil and toxicity from power plants? I do know that port parts of Puerto Rico are feeling the effects of coal ash. I love you, Wendy! And much love to your kitty. Come here, sweetie. Come here, poops. You don't want to keep... This... Captain Slippers is with me. This is exactly why we should participate in the local drug take-back programs. Absolutely. Absolutely. Trump just celebrated Earth Day with less regulations. Of course. Of course. I mean, look who's the head of the EPA. Look at that. The Trump's, for the first guys, um, Eric and Don Jr., go hunt. They went trophy hunting. And they lied about where the, the carcasses went. They lied. They said it went to the villages to, to, so they can eat, and that never happened. That's ostrich shit. Captain Slippers. Come here, silly. Here's Captain Slippers. <laughs> Captain Slippers. Captain Slippers, what do you think? What do you think, sweetie? Captain Slippers has had enough. Sorry, ouch. Ow, Jesus! I'm sorry. There are regulations that require the removal of oil and toxicity tests are required. Okay, because, um, I just hope that they're really, I hope that's being regulated. 
and I hope that the uh, I hope that the drugs in our wastewater is being regulated. Amazing. So Andy, Andy, can you tell us where we can go online to 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 support and let folks know about um about regulating our wastewaters? He is sassy. He's sassy. He is so, Captain Slippers is so sassy. Hello, Captain. Captain Slippers is so funny. He is. He really is. He just, he really don't care. Oh, he j he really does take what he wants. And he's always trying to get my scraps. And you know what's fun? Oh, Wendy, stop it, please. Uh, do you know, do you know that Captain Slippers here eats pasta? What, do you, do you, do you folks have pets? And if so, do they eat any crazy things? Let me know. Yes, Andy Rich, please. Please let me know the link. And again, thank you so much for doing what you do, for being an environmental scientist. Um, as you saw, the purge happened last last year when um, the president came into office. You, see, you saw a lot of folks in your industry just sort of drop out. If I stand correct here, a lot of the folks that worked for the Environmental Protection Agency said, this place is ridiculous. Pasta is fabulous. Even cats know. But yeah, no, it's a, it's a stunning time, really, when there just isn't enough support for environmental regulations, I feel, and then there isn't even enough there isn't enough in the budget that's going towards environmental help. Oh, gee. Your other cat eats lettuce? That's crazy. My cat, your cat eats dog food. <laughs> lettuce and dog food, that's cuckoo. Oh my goodness. Pets eat the craziest things. I once had a cockatoo that loved to eat like uh, uh, not crackers, but like Ritz peanut butter crackers. Cock cockatoos are amazing. Uh, thank you, folks, so much for watching the Honey Badger News Report. Tell your friends, please, and join me on Twitter. Could you please, please? Make Dead Eyes available to buy on iTunes. Yes! Oh, Craven, thank you so much for asking. Of course I will. Thank you so much. Ooh, good grief. Thank you. And I will be singing more songs, so watch out, because I have more songs coming up. Oh, please. I would have voted for your cat. I would have voted for your cat. It's just going to get crazier, folks. You know, sadly, the demo... I, got I just got to say, I don't want to... I don't want to... I don't want to get political here. I mean, of course we are, because it's political with regards to children and wildlife. But, um, I just got to say that I, I, I'm just waiting for the Democrats to provide uh, a, a great candidate. But I just, what are they doing? That's all I got to say is I just don't, it's stunning what's happening in politics. And so many in the GOP don't like their president, yet they're just complicit. And I feel like the Democrats are too, in a way. Oh, goodness. They're using all their resources in, you know, to do the wrong things, if you ask me. Let's really get some great candidates and get, get us excited for the midterms and all that stuff. I will do my show every day. I promise you, I'm going to just keep creating a ton of more, a ton of more content. A ton of more comp. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, folks. I really appreciate these comments. Uh, yeah, some more music coming your way. And um, hopefully some duets with Captain Slippers. And um, just keep watching. Come back for uh, more. Don't forget to subscribe and check out the links in this video's description so you, so you can see how you can support us and follow us and do all these fun things. Um, as I said, uh, we will be attending the Cryptocurrency Invest Summit that's happening here in downtown Los Angeles, and I'm looking very forward to that. We'll be coming to you live from there, and it's going to be a lot of fun. 
Uh, I'm telling you folks, this economy, this United States economy is about to collapse, and I feel all other, oh, simply because other nations are getting privy to the idea that they don't have to use the dollar. And so that really freaks out our country. You gotta use the US dollar. You got everything's about the US dollar. Anyways, it's gonna go crazy, especially with the fact that they just rolled back Dodd-Frank. And, you know, I have to focus on money and all, and business and all these sorts of things because it relates to wildlife and animals. I'm just sitting over here waiting for someone to start dumping money into protecting wildlife. Without wildlife, we're nothing, folks. If we lose the bees, who are presently endangered, we're screwed. So anyways, it all falls into play. And, you know, the contractors and defense military stocks, they go up. And you see where the money goes. There's no clean water in Flint, Michigan still. It costs $50 million to repair. But instead, the money is going towards airstrikes, building a wall. Help the environment. Help people. That's my whole thing. Just good grief. And at least share what's going on, folks. You know, these mainstream media isn't letting you know about the estrogen that's in the wastewater. It isn't letting you know about Puerto Rico being stunned by the coal ash. You know, cancer, incidents of cancer are rising in Puerto Rico, and they still don't have power in certain areas. $224 million for um, strikes in Syria when we really could use that money to better the water system right here at home. It's insane. And yes, poor bees. Once again, we're putting the chemicals into the environment and the bees just, they can't get it. They can't relate. They can't, they're not used to this new atmosphere. It's really terrible. It's really terrible. Again, I, I say it, I say it all the time. Every morning I step out of my house and I'm helping a bee. I'm saving a bee that's walking on the sidewalk. Like so slowly, I just always pick up bees and I put them over in the grass and I just give them rubs and hope sometimes they fly off and sometimes they don't. What is this? War is always more important to the government. Absolutely, Rachel. Absolutely. Because when you have wars, folks make more money. But as you can see from these videos that I've been posting recently, there is wildlife in Yemen. You know, there's wildlife in Syria. There's wildlife in Russia. There's wildlife in Korea. There's, you know, folks... Oh, my goodness. We gotta focus. We gotta focus. That's all I gotta say. And so that's why I'm just trying to let you folks know. And I really appreciate you watching and chatting with me. And again, Andy and Wendy and, and Andy, thank you so much for raising this awareness. Again, please give us a link. Let us know. And folks, just let's go online and Google wastewater estrogen and, and learn more about what we can do so they can better regulate the drugs that are in the wastewater. Oh, my goodness. I mean, will the op opioid crisis affect wildlife? Possibly. Possibly. We'll get a lot, lot of dopey, apathetic fish and amphibians. All I know is that, like, we, like, in the next five or ten years, we could lose frogs and certain types of fish. There's no financial incentives to save wildlife. Uh, wildlife. Absolutely, Joshua. Absolutely. That's what's so shocking. That's the thing. Oh, my goodness, you do? Oh, Wendy raises bees. Bless you. Bless you. And we do, DJ. We have to save the wildlife. Yeah, you know, I don't... Here's the thing, you know, it's it's hard to tell folks that there's while there's no financial benefit, there is life benefit. Like in order for us to thrive and go on, we need wildlife. We just do. We need the wildlife beside us. And you know, so as we survey the lands and go around the earth trying to get precious minerals and um natural earth resources such as oil and such as precious gems and things like this um 
we, we have our own precious resources and commodities right in front of us, and we need to protect them. The link is above. Great. Thank you so much. Whew. Folks, thank you so much for watching. And to recap, there's a new beetle that they discovered in Malaysia called the DiCaprio beetle, named after the actor who, since 1998, has been helping to save the environment. Uh, the oldest known spider, a trapdoor spider named Vivian, has passed away at the age of 43 due to a wasp attack, and she was stung. And the number of hedgehog, hedgehog sightings is decreasing for the third year in a row, according to BBC's Gardner's uh, World magazine. The opioid crisis will most certainly affect wildlife. Oh, of course. Of course. It already does. Simply by simply by consuming these things around them and then tossing everything like it's nothing and then it just goes right into the system. Ooh, the cops are coming. Let's chuck our stuff. It goes into the stream. Oh, please. Thank you so much, Andy Rich. And thank you, Wendy. And thank you, all of you. DJ, Aquaman, Rachel. I can't thank you all enough um, for tuning in. And please, spread the word. Spread the word. Share these videos. Let folks know. We're not alone. We are not alone. And um, keep peace. You know, they used to say back in the 80s and 90s, peace in the Middle East. And it still rings true today. Peace to the Middle East. Peace to the wildlife. Peace to the children. Protect the children. Throw your hands in the air. Until Don't next time, honey badgers. Let me hear you say, oh dear. I love you. Be safe. Throw your hands in the and protect air. wildlife. Let me hear you say, oh dear.